Our country is blessed with rich natural resources, but sadly, we have repeatedly squandered these gifts. We are destroying nature's fragile treasures over time, but there is still a glimmer of hope. In this series, we take a look at various protected areas throughout the archipelago to learn the stories of the land, how it was once neglected and abused, and how it is slowly being renewed. This is Loren Legarda, and I present our Fragile Earth, Protected Areas of the Philippines. On July 30, 2004, Congress enacted Republic Act 9303, otherwise known as the Mount Tamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary of 2004. The Act declares a mountain range in its vicinities as a protected area under the category of Wildlife Sanctuary. For the Mandaya indigenous group living in the uplands, the lowlanders in the city of Mati, and the towns of San Isidro and Governor Generoso, the mountain range is an important part of their natural heritage. The conservation that is said and the protection that is coming to us because we are just coming to the tag team. That is what we call the Certificate of Ancestral Domain Title of the Mandaya Manubo Tribe. As soon as you heard the name Mount Hamigitan, the first thing that is coming to us is the Pygmy Forest. Yung mga kahoy na nasustant yung growth because of a highly mineralized soil of the mountain. But other than that, marami pang resources within the Mount Hamigitan. It is also considered as an ecological staircase because uh, it contains five distinct vegetation types. No? The Musi Pygmy Forest at the topmost elevation followed by the Musi Forest. Then at the mid portion of the mountain is the mountain. Then followed by... Uh, the Deep Tropical Forest, then at the lowermost part of this uh, mountain range is the agro-ecosystem. Ang daming attractions at ang daming uh, flora and fauna na doon lang talaga makikita. It's like the pitcher plant. No, andun yung pinakamaliit na, na raptor. Uh, andun din yung pinakamalaki, which is the Philippine Eagle. These conditions have made the Mount Tamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary the ideal habitat for our country's national pride. Striking in appearance, these ferocious hunters prey on small mammals. But their population has been seriously threatened by years of poaching and deforestation. The situation persuaded the Philippine Eagle Foundation to commit to its mission to reverse the Philippine Eagle's dwindling number and restore its habitat. This vision is quite limited uh, to the islands of uh, Mindanao, Samar, Leyte, and Luzon. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there are very few of them left. Only 400 bears are left in the wild. So that is why we have this uh, project, the Biodiversity Partnerships Project. So it has been implemented in eight sites all over the country. Tapos po, one of the sites is Mount Hamigitan Key Biodiversity Area. On June 12, 2015, while the country celebrated Independence Day, the Philippine Eagle Foundation spearheaded the release of another rehabilitated eagle, Pamana. Well, Pamana was an eagle which we uh, rehabilitated uh, after it was captured in illegal. Uh, the bird was uh, initially shot. We treated her and uh, tried to rehabilitate her. And after uh, two years, she was uh, ready for release back to the wild. Um, maraming challenges dyan kasi we cannot deny that there are still matatawag natin illegal activities like poaching, um, yung mga hunting of wildlife, and dyan pa rin. Uh, prior to releasing the bird, uh, we, we conducted uh, education and information campaigns uh, throughout the range, uh, primarily working with uh, schools, local government units. However, the great accomplishment of restoring the Philippine eagle's habitat suffered a big blow. Two months after her release, Pamana was found dead in the middle of the wild. It bore a wound from a metal fragment believed to be from a shattered metal gun pellet. Other scientists offer an alternative perspective. Not necessarily na nabaril siya. 
it could be na uh, si Pamana being an introduced eagle sa, sa site and not even sa, sa sa core or buffer zone ng site siya napunta but then uh, yung environment, yung acceptability niya sa environment so perhaps yung mga resident eagle na doon at saka species baka ayaw din sa kanya prior to the release, yung mga studies na kailangan yung involvement ng communities, I think hindi yun na set up. And three years, almost three years, he was fed there. She was not made, she was not trained to hunt, even for a few days, no, few weeks. The Philippine Eagle Foundation dismissed these alternative theories and stood by its findings. Basically, uh, everything done by the foundation was transparent. Uh, we had the uh, eagle uh, Necropsy by a, by a qualified uh, veterinarian, and the results uh, are well documented. Uh, the bird was radio tagged, so it, it needs a radio signal, and that's what uh, our biologists follow day in and day out. So, when it committed the mortality mode, which means uh, uh, something was wrong with the bird, uh, we immediately went to search for, for the I only knew that Pamana died. Five days after they, they, they brought the carcass to Davao City. What do they know about looking for, for an eagle? What? It requires a certain kind of uh, expertise to do this. In addition to that, we only had uh, a couple of trans, uh, transceivers. Uh, without a transceiver, you cannot. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Hindi naman kami nagkulang. May mga bantay gubat kami. Ang mga tao namin dito ever since. Wala talagang nag ano, walang nag, walang, walang ginagalaw na mga living things. Ang mga taga San Isidro, especially La Union, uh, they were so surprised. No, bakit well, hindi happened. pinatay ha? Bakit namatay? Yun nga ang problema dyan. Pinagtakpan ng mga tao doon, the fact that killing and hunting of wildlife was going on in the area. The death of Pamana is a reminder of the unsafe conditions in our forests that affect the survival of wildlife. No amount of finger pointing or blame dodging can reverse the negative impact of human activities on biodiversity. But instead of surrendering to man's ways, let us make it a turning point and enjoin our local leaders and communities to further collaborate for a more responsive and effective policy in conserving our natural resources and wildlife.